Hey, what's going on everybody? I appreciate you tuning in. So I decided that uh, I move around too much when I do recording and I kind of sacrifice audio quality. So I decided I wanted to give a lovelier mic um, a shot. Uh, this one can hook up to your XLR, your DSLR, your smartphone, or your PC. You get two transmitters, one receiver, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we're gonna just go ahead and test this out really quick and run through it. I have already opened it, so I do know what's in it, but um, you get a pretty good hard case. It's not uh, super stiff, not super soft, but nice case for what it is. And there's the receivers and the mic. Um, like I said, you get your instructions and some how-to stuff, how to hook stuff up. Great for that. Uh, nicely packaged in foam. Everything stays pretty tight. You end up getting two of the microphones that clip onto yourself. And we got a viewer. Welcome, viewer. I don't know who you are, but uh, let me turn on my live chat. Maybe you said hi. Let's see. Where are all of it? I don't want just the top. There it is. There it is. Oh, that's Spike. Hey, bro. All right. So, uh, yeah, you get um, you get two of these microphones, which is great because you get two transmitters. And then you get uh, connecting pieces. If you have an uh, Android phone or an iPhone, you get the connecting pieces for it. And my lights are dropping out on me because I have them on a timed motion sensor. So let me move around. There we go. We got lights back. Yay. All right, so uh, very important, this piece with the little microphone, that needs to go into your phone or your uh, camera, whatever. And then this connects from here. Just a quick snap. Into your receiver, like so. And uh, so you know that when you turn it on, a little long hold, you get a green light on it. The green light means that it is not paired to anything. But as soon as you turn on your receiver, back that up there, long hold on the receiver. As soon as the receiver or the transmitter turns on, the light goes blue. You know you're connected and you're good. Um, I'll plug that into the phone for, in a minute. And you get two of these super fuzzy little microphone covers like i said you get an iphone uh iphone thing as well you get uh little dongles to hook up and wires wire not wirelessly hook up and charge your your pieces all right so there's a couple different types one has a two-way one is just the one so you can charge up your Transmitter and your receiver. And then there's your little iPhone piece if you have the iPhone so that you can hook up and use it for uh, iPhone recording. Also, beneficially, if you have somebody else doing the shooting for you um, on top of your receiver, there is a headphone jack so they can tell you live while you're doing it if you are sounding good and your audio is right. So what I'm gonna do right now is plug in the microphone here and then we'll get this tested out and, and see what the difference in the sound quality is. Because typically, like I said, I move around a bit. So normally if I go way over here, oh, yeah, I'm just gonna grab something and I keep talking and I'm way over here, I kind of start dropping out unless it's really, really quiet. And then you kind of hear me coming back and rambling on, so. I wanted to avoid doing that, so I decided, why not? Let's invest into this little microphone and see how that goes. So that's what I'm doing, right? So I'm just going to carry that with me. I'm not going to clip it on, but I am going to plug this into the phone here real quick so you're going to get some movement on the screen. Damn, I got that thing in there. I have an OtterBox case and... Uh, it's definitely holding holding tight to the phone jack.
No, it didn't tell me that it switched over to. Didn't tell me it switched over to a plug-in microphone. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. We'll find out. I'm gonna walk outside with this. I'll walk outside. You probably hear my chickens and my ducks, or you're not hearing anything at all. One or the other. Yeah, you can hear my ducks quacking, maybe. Yeah, my ducks might be making a little bit of noise. Chickens aren't making too much noise, but we'll see if you can hear me now. Let's see if this works. If not, I think maybe I just have to start the video with it hooked up. It might not let me switch on the fly. Uh, Spike, you were saying something. Let me see what you were saying there. Oh, so it did. It did. Uh, it switched good then. Could you hear the ducks? Not sure if you could hear the ducks or not. Oh, cool. Cool. I'm glad it freaking worked. That's, uh, that's cool. Take you for a little walk. I'll show you my chickens and my ducks. Clip this, uh, clip this receiver onto my shirt here. Okay, so one thing I don't like, right off the gate, you have to pull pull the clip up. All right, you can't just push on this part. It doesn't go anywhere, so you have to pull the clip up. I don't like that so much, but um, whatever. Not a huge deal, I guess. Just depends on where you're where you're mounting things, so a little microphone, I'll just clip that on. That seems pretty strong, a little microphone. All right, let's take a little walk. I'll show you, show you the chickens and the ducks. Take a little walk outside. Normally I'm doing live streams at night so you don't get to see this, but uh, I got my, uh, my little backyard here, my, my giant garden back there. Almost all that is garden, yeah. Got my little ducks. And my chickens come running because they're like, oh, he's probably bringing food. Trying to zoom out all the way up. Yep. Chickens coming running, trying to get some food. I don't have anything in my hands, so she's not interested now. But yep, we have a few chickens. A few chickens and the ducks quieted down. If I had food, they would all be mobbing me right now. And that's not even all the du all the chickens either. The ducks are being quite loud. And these are the Jersey Giants, these black ones. They will be the biggest chickens that I have. And we got an Isa Brown and a Wyandotte and a sapphire gem over there and a bard rock and here comes an americana we got another bard rock over there let's see if they paid rent today let's see if they got any rent no rent in that coop oh there's my other isa brown she's oh look, there goes a little runner Yep, there's an Isa Brown. She just gave me rent. She was laying on it. Yep, no more rent in there. Yeah, dude, fresh eggs are the freaking bust. Yeah, fresh eggs are definitely the best, but so my property is uh, pretty large. Um, I, I pretty much go back to the trees way in the back there. Those trees way back there. I go way, way back there. And then I got a nice set of woods to walk over there and my neighbor's building a house. 
all right? So the only downside is I live right on a main road, but my neighbor seems to be pretty cool so far. Take a walk over there. I can show you something, Spike. This will be, uh, I was waiting to show this because I haven't actually done it yet, but my neighbor over here, he's been, uh, He's been pretty cool. He's got a lot of building going on over here. But uh, I'm going to score some uh, some good free wood off him. If you want to want to see wood envy. When he moved in, he knocked down a whole bunch of uh, poplar trees, which is pretty easy to carve. Yeah, free wood is the best, but this free wood is like ridiculous. So you can kind of see it over here, right? The down trees, walk through some of this muddy stuff. He told me I can have all of this, as much as I want, right? So got some little logs here, pretty much nothing. And it's pretty, pretty simple, just little pieces of poplar. And then I got this. I just gotta drag it all out of here and I have my neighbor across the street with a tractor who's gonna help me with that. Get all that. Flip this up here, all right? That piece comes up, up, up and over. Back out all that there. This big gigantic piece here. This piece with some wild rot to it. All right, all this, there's a big log under here too. You can kind of see the bark there, yep. And that, that log right there is freaking massive. Massive like this, right? Like this is kind of covered up, but I mean, it's, it's wider than my freaking arm, right? Like huge, huge cookie slice. And this is all covered over with vines right now. And it's all under here. So I'm gonna be making some benches and stuff is my plan. All of this vine, it's all covering up big old chunks of it, right? If I go down over here, right, come down over here, there we go. You get all that, get a little better look at what was covering the vines or what the vines were covering. And this piece right here, it goes all the way up over there. So I'm gonna be doing some benches, I think, out of this. Um, I just gotta get it drug over. This is that piece that I said comes all the way over here. A piece under my foot right here. That was that big one that I said comes all the way over there. All right. And this is a good, that's a good 20 inch in diameter. I mean, that's easy 20 inch. Plus this one laying down in here. Just gotta drag that sucker out of there. Step out of here, All right? Step out of here and take a little jump over. And here's another one, another freaking huge one. And then all this freaking huge stuff. Now it's all green wood, yeah, but I got lots of area to store all this stuff now. This is a pretty good score though. I asked him if he was gonna burn it or what he was gonna do with it. And he said, you can take as much as you want. So some of the smaller stuff might be good for, for firewood and that's about it. But some of this is pretty good. Nice pieces for wood spirits. This piece is about five feet. Yeah, I'll have enough, I'll have enough poplar wood to last me a freaking half a lifetime. And some of these pieces are really, really good, really, really big pieces. Um, really heavy right now, but like this piece right here, this piece that's split, make some nice stuff out of that. Wood spirits, whatever. But yeah, lots of cool stuff, man. Lots of really cool stuff. And then it's really fucking not that far from my house. Oh yeah, yeah, years and years and years worth. It'll definitely be something that I will be able to uh, have for a long time. I'm just gonna have to wait a little while to actually carve it. And then, like I said, I got all those 
those woods over there are my neighbors, but um, a neighbor, I believe, is a farmer that owns all that, and he doesn't do anything with it. So I don't know that he'll actually give a crap if I go over there and scavenge wood or not. I don't think he would. He's, uh, he's the one that tilled up my little garden over here for me. My wife decided she wanted a good garden. We had a really small garden not too long ago at our old house. And now we have a 3,000 square foot garden. There's some corn coming up, a little, little tuft of corn coming up here and there. Bits of corn, it kind of got severely overtaken by weeds. Really kind of sucks, but uh, I had some things pop up. I believe these are uh, watermelon growing here. Oh yeah, I agree, if it's falling, you're definitely helping maintain things. I believe these are the watermelon that she planted. Nope, pumpkins. Yep, she's got her little little stick. These are these are her pumpkins that she planted. So she's got her little pumpkins starting to pop out. And the freaking weeds just overtook everything really quick. And we got this little got a little plum here working its way up on this little little plum tree. Alright, we got little Semi-dwarf plums. We got one plum on the tree. If the deer don't come and eat it. And then we got a little dwarf pear tree. It's not really so dwarf. It's a good seven and a half. Uh, yeah, probably about seven and a half feet tall. And we got some tomatoes. We don't even eat that many tomatoes. I don't know why my why my wife goes after these tomatoes so much, but good, good. Lots of ripe tomatoes. There's a big sucker there. Lots of good tomato plants. I gotta kind of be somewhat careful where I'm walking now. And we got our little peach tree. Got a whole bunch of little peaches on it. Just waiting for those to get a little bit bigger. Those will be pretty tasty. We have a second peach tree here. This one had more peaches on it, but I think either the deer got to them or they all fell off, whatever. I don't know. And then a little honey crisp apple tree. These were all planted at the beginning of this year. And then she's got her, her little cucumbers, I believe, are here. With lots of lots of grass and weeds growing up. And we got another honey crisp apple tree that apparently is dying. Looks like it got some gypsy moth on it. That's no good. We're gonna have to let the city know because they'll come and they'll spray for those gypsy moth. Yeah, it's uh, it was something that both my wife and I wanted was uh, bigger property away from the city and uh, being able to just kind of venture out a little bit. And we got our little cherry tree here too. And some Queen Anne's lace, we'll knock that down. Get rid of that Queen Anne's lace. That stuff can be uh, really irritant to your skin. We got some Bing semi-dwarf cherries. But uh, yeah, we, my wife and I both wanted uh, property out of the city and cleaned up. Got a bunch of good heads of cabbage here. Lots of good cabbage coming up. My wife made a really good cabbage soup the other day. And then unfortunately she left it out so some of it got spoiled. I don't know what she's growing here. I don't know what this is, but it's clearly something that she planted. We've had little bunnies coming and having their little feast and there's stuff in this row here too. And then we got some greens here. I don't know. What kind of greens? My wife knows, I don't know. But we give these to our little bearded dragon. And there's more stuff in here too. There's There was some cantaloupe and stuff in here somewhere. This might actually be a vacant area, I don't know. I think the cantaloupes were over here somewhere. Oh, there goes the little bunnies. I don't know if you can see the little bunny over there. Yeah, 
Yeah, right there. There's a the little bunny. See her move? There she goes. She's gone. Over here snacking. Taking up my food. Hey, we got another viewer. Yeah, so we got some watermelon planted in this row. And then I think there's, yeah, cantaloupe are planted in this row. But those little bunnies, little jerks, they ate all the cantaloupes down. I think there's maybe, I think these are cantaloupe here maybe. But the freaking bunnies, they, they've been devastating my cantaloupes here. What's up, Cleve? Mr. Dave Cleveland in the house. Yeah, these are my little so they're gonna hopefully sprout some fruit soon. And we got a couple little melons kicking in there, a couple little watermelons. We got three of them that I see so far. Yeah, I'm trying out this new lavalier mic, Dave. Not, uh, not too bad. Helps me be able to stay mobile, and not actually be holding the camera. But yeah, not too bad. It was, uh, I don't think my wife even knows she's got pumpkins growing out here yet. Yeah, my, my property line is, uh, 200 and, I want to say it's 238 feet wide and 866 feet deep. So, yeah, got a bunch of little, little fun stuff. I'll be building a set of cornhole boards here real soon. And, uh, this area right here next to the fire pit. Yeah, dude, I, I definitely recommend looking into these lavalier mics. This one was like, I put a link for it in the description of the video and it was right around 90 bucks with two transmitters and one receiver. Not that you'd ever need two transmitters, but I just said, oh, you know, if one transmitter goes out, I'll already have a backup. That was kind of my theory on it. It was only like 20 or $25 more, something like that to have the second transmitter. Um, so I went with that. My wife has her little hammock area. All the kids play around with the hammock. And then we got more, more good vegetables here. We got some, some little strawberries. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that the squirrels have been having fun with that. And we got some blueberries and more strawberries in here. And I don't know, I think yeah, that tree just died. This was our other cherry tree. Just became a little weed garden. A little itty bitty greenhouse to get things going. My wife wants a much bigger greenhouse. I can't say that I blame her. And we'll go back back into the house and get back by all the all the chickens and ducks. Dave, you'll get to hear all the ducks go crazy. They're bigger chickens than the chickens. Little Isa Brown, little Bard Rock, little Wyandot. A Jersey Giant, and we got Sapphire Gem, Bard Rock, Jersey Giant, Americana, Jersey, Americana, and this little Americana in the back, if I can zoom in on her enough. She's bearded. She's like a little freaking Scottish hen. Those are actually the breeds, Dave. Those are actually the, the breeds of the chickens. This is the one that looks like a little chicken hawk right here is an Americana. She's a Jersey Giant, which she'll get to be, all these black ones that are Jersey Giants, they'll all get to be up to be about 14 pounds. That's an Americana, that's a Bard Rock, that's a Sapphire Gem. She was really cool when she was a little baby chick. She'd hang out with you and she looked like a little bitty baby penguin at first, and now she obviously doesn't look like a penguin. So now her name is Pecker. And that one is Jersey Girl. And that one doesn't have a name. This one is Cluck Norris. And this one over here, that's Little Clucky. And the other Isa that's older, that's a younger Isa. The other Isa that's older, I think she's in the coop right now. Uh, I think the kids named her Sarah, but my my wife vetoed the name Sarah. I know Cluck Norris is a pretty funny one. 
Uh, my wife vetoed the name Sarah, and we had Sarah and we had Scarlet, but one of them, one of them passed away. But uh, my wife vetoed the name Sarah, and then ended up calling calling that bird Two Cluck Shakur and Mother Clucker. <laughs> so <laughs> my wife renamed the chickens to what she wanted, and the kids get mad at me because. I usually don't call them by name. I call them all chicken noodle soup, chicken dinner, chicken tenders, anything to do with the chicken meal because once they stop paying rent via eggs, they will be chicken noodle soup, chicken dinner, chicken fingers. <laughs> and then the shop is going to start taking form here soon. I, um, I bought myself a little retractable hose reel that I can put way up freaking high in the ceiling. My ceilings are like 10 foot ceilings, maybe 11 foot. And uh, I've got my, uh, I went out and picked up an air compressor last weekend. Got me a decent little Mastercraft Menards air compressor. And I got my laser booth back together. Laser booth is uh, pretty good. Yep, yeah, the, uh, the desk is uh, desk is going to be a good additive. All of this, all that stack, that's all cherry wood. I got all that cherry wood. It's uh, I don't know out from the wall. It's probably about 14, 15 inches out from the wall this way. These boards right here are six foot, and those are up to about two and a half foot. Um, I got all of that cherry wood up near my property up north for $60. What's up, Mr. Freaking Bap? Haven't seen you in a while, brother. Then I got all my logs for pumpkins, a bunch of birch logs and some walnut, and a bunch of other big ones, and then a bunch of my other scrap wood, lots of my good exotic hardwoods. There's some sapelia right there on the top, and some purple heart and yellow heart, and some more sapelia and other stuff, and then my motorcycle's hiding underneath the tarp so that don't get all dusty. And I got some walnut and some other nice stuff in there. And uh, I think uh, next live carving, next live carving, we're going for uh, going for something kind of creepy there, right? Anybody recognize what that is? If anybody doesn't recognize that, that is the Hellhound from Ghostbusters. And I already kind of started on it and I'm not going to make it exactly like this. Um, nope, uh, kind of kind of a character, but uh, yeah, like I said, the, uh, the Hellhound from Ghostbusters, the movie is what that is, uh, Gruel, I believe. But I already kind of started on it. All right, so I'm gonna make it uh, a little bit more, a little bit more sporn, horns and spikes to it, but I already kind of started on it. I'll probably continue that a little more on the next live carving, maybe. But I took this off of uh, this little post over here that I had, right? So I got the little black post, and right behind that is a bigger piece like this. So that's what I did. I just cut it off of that. Yeah, so we'll see how good that goes. See how good that goes and see what I can uh, can do with that. But yeah, the, um, the desk is uh, it's gonna be really cool. I gotta, I gotta hide my element challenge piece over here so I don't show it yet, because we're, we're not supposed to show it. Yeah, there we go, it's hidden. So yeah, the desk is, uh, it's pretty good and uh, I had a couple of my traded slash gift carvings up here. One from Dan Hunk and one from Les Pena. And Larry's is in there too. And then a bunch of my other little goofy, silly carvings, including my little mushroom. Sweet. I can't wait to see your element challenge, Bap. I'm sure that's going to be fucking awesome. And I got another, another little piece of cedar. And... Uh, 
And another piece of that maple, same maple that I carved this dude out of. <laughs> I asked him about it on the, I commented on the video and asked him if that was his element challenge piece or not. And he has replied, but I haven't gone to look at the reply yet. Yeah, and then the, uh, the big old laser booth. I mean, this thing is fucking massive. All right, so the laser booth is fucking massive. I built that fucking thing big. That's a 40 inch by 40 inch laser bed working space. I usually only do a 39 by 39 piece and I did a, that's, uh, that's my square jig for when I do coasters and cutting so I can square it up and get a really nice perfect lineup. All right. So I can't move the laser, otherwise I'm gonna throw it all out of whack. But uh, if I take a, take a coaster set, all right, it's already cut square, and I wanna engrave it, I can just drop it in and square it up. And then I know exactly where it's at. I draw my laser right to the corner here, and I can square everything up and make it absolutely perfect. So it was a, Worthwhile investment to do a little stupid square jig. Um, I just made it out of a piece of MDF. Oh yeah, I got some other good pieces for carving back here too. I got this big old hunk of black walnut that's sitting underneath. That's a pretty freaking big hunk. And then this long ass freaking log, that's gonna go to the kid up north. I don't know what I'm carving in it yet, but uh, it's going to the kid up north. And these are gonna be my cornhole boards that I'm gonna build using one buys and I picked up some, uh, picked up some lights for it, some LED cornhole lights. Those will be good for uh, lighting the hole. So that'll, I'll probably do a little video on that. You're getting there, dude. You're, uh, you're gaining subs really fast, Bap. I mean, you're gaining subs really fast and well-deserved, too. I mean, your fucking work is amazing. Yeah, I mean, your work is definitely freaking up there. But yeah, this uh, the laser booth, man. <laughs> I had to break that son of a gun down to bring it into the house, and move it from the old house to this house. Holy crap. Holy crap, that was kind of a job. And then I took the time add in some spacer blocks so I could get thicker pieces in. Cause I have it, I have my laser set with a one, two, three block. So I can set the laser right on top of the two inch mark and I have it focused right at that. It helps me focus in on everything faster. And then I ran some airline so I can start, the airline runs all the way through all this channel, all through this channel back here, this cat track and up to here. I got to make a mount so I can keep the air blowing on the laser. And then uh, a little air pump there. But that should give me some much better burning results. Thank you, Bap. And then uh, I got my little, my little uh, spline gauge or spline jig back there. The little spline jig is... Uh, good for doing uh strengthening your miter corners if you do a mitered corner they're typically not that strong because they're you're gluing end grain to end grain so they don't generally don't do very good as far as strength but if you put a spline in the miter it increases the strength a shit ton i mean a shit ton i don't know if any of you guys uh use the aprons or not i use my apron from time to time but I ordered one of the Katz Moses aprons and dude I gotta tell you like for what he charged for these aprons compared to a cheap apron I mean this this one here on the left is like super lightweight and flimsy this is like thick heavy duty like damn good like I mean if you if you hit this with a freaking dremel you're not gonna tear into it I mean, obviously a chainsaw would, probably the cuts all discs would tear through it, but this is a, a great 
apron for housing all your tools and stuff. I just got to get the shop cleaned up. And there's my little bandsaw. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. It does what it needs to do. It's what I blocked out that Ghostbusters piece with. And then I use the electric blower to blow the dust out of the shop. A little drill press. And one of the Cadillacs of my shop. This fucking Bosch articulating arm miter saw. I mean, that thing is just super smooth, super easy action. I mean, you can move that fucker with your pinky. It's just really, really good. And then I got a couple pieces of cherry that are going into a cutting board that's coming up and some other pieces. Got some more tools over there. Uh, the dust collector in the corner. I finally hung up a shelf, a bunch of my clamps, a bunch of my bar clamps down there on the ground and some other stuff. Oh, dude, that would, that would piss me off having my tools stolen. Oh my. Like, oh, dude, I, oh, I would lose my stuff, man. That really sucks. Got my little alien head still. I'm gonna have to find a spot for this guy in the shop. Pretty big. I did give him a little neck hole too. I'm gonna find a spot for that guy in the shop. But yeah, dude, I got freaking tools and everything all over the place. I gotta, I gotta do some, some cleanup. I would, I would hope so, dude. I would hope they would lose their fingers. Yeah, I got a bunch of, bunch of stuff and projects and there's the first wood spirit. He fell down. Little banana Jesus. That's what I call him. I got a bunch of black walnut slices and have a good one, Dave. Appreciate you stopping in. Got a bunch of, uh, black walnut slices and stuff like that. Oh, my little cookie slice fell. That's what sent that crash into the ground. That's a little piece of spalted walnut or spalted maple cookie slice. Got all kinds of jigs and setups and stuff. And I really just got to get out here and clean. Like really, really got to get out here and clean. Get some stuff organized. And then, uh, and down here, you got this piece right here. That is a gift cutting board in the mix, right? So I've done a bunch of work on it and I've been trying to cut these swirls into it and I've got quite a bit more work to go, but the rest of it is in that box and I may have bit off a little more than I can chew, but you gotta challenge yourself and it's going as a gift. So if it's not 100% perfect, it's a gift. And you know, it's a learning, learning piece, so. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it was, it was quite, quite packed in it. I mean, there's gonna be a lot more room in it once I clean some stuff up and move some stuff out. But realistically, like everything right here that's all, that's all cut off pieces and pieces for projects. That's all hardwood. I mean, everything in there, like over here, right in the corner, I've got some Chechen, which is a very, very hard, very, very dense wood. And then right on top of those two pieces of Chechen is a piece of zebra wood. Um, I got some hickory in there. I got a bunch of different hardwoods in there. Some of that cherry that I pointed out earlier, there's a bunch of wormholes in it. That was one of the pieces that came out of there. Most of this is uh, pine and poplar and just common board, nothing special. But lots of this stuff, I mean, all right, this is a piece of sapili. And then we had some walnut, nice piece of walnut. Lots of sapili, lots of walnut. And this is all smaller stuff, man. This is all stuff that goes in for like coasters and stuff like that. And I really like finding stuff like this, right? Like. It's just an ugly knot. What would you do with it? But you can fill that with epoxy, do all kinds of cool stuff with it, but it's just a really, really cool looking piece of, really, really cool looking piece of uh, black walnut. I mean, the grain is just absolutely gorgeous in black walnut. There's some cracking in it. 
So this really can't go into like a cutting board or anything, but you really wouldn't think I would save it. But I know I'll figure something out for it. It's that whole, oh, I've had it in the garage for 27 years, but I'm gonna find something to do with it. And eventually it'll, it'll be a doorstop or something. And I got my jaw horse down here. And a good amount of purple heart, right? A little dusty. Nice pieces of purple heart in there and some maple. Sapili, one of my favorite woods to work with. Nope, that's walnut. That's not Sapili. That is a piece of walnut. This is Sapili. One of my favorite woods to work with. That Sapili just color changes and glows. Sapili is one of my favorite woods to work with. It really does legitimately like change color with a different uh, texture on it. Oh, this is pretty nice. You want to guess what kind of wood that is? Trying to get it to focus in there. That's a nice piece of Paduke. And then there's the, there's that beautiful piece of zebra wood. Crazy green. I gotta mill it and flatten it out because it's not, uh, not at all a straight. I gotta get it milled and flattened out. And then the big old heavy chunk of Chechen. Yeah, big old chunk of Chechen. I got two of these. Super tight green, super dense. And then big old pieces of cottonwood. This is what I sent Rob. I cut him off a piece of this and I sent him a piece of this uh, cottonwood. So it's not cottonwood bark, but it is just regular cottonwood. Um, it is in the, uh, the poplar family. Oh, this right here? Yeah, I believe that's oak. And this is supposed to be a little memorial piece. Um, I sanded all that down. It's supposed to be like a little headstone for somebody's dog. Um, dogs, plural. He gave it to me and it was gonna be a Christmas present for his mom. And then he told me to hold off. And I said, well, I got it all sanded down and ready to get some engraving on. And uh, you know, just let me know when you're ready. And I actually saw him this morning. I'm like, hey, I still got that ready to go. And uh, he goes, I actually thought about it. So I'm just waiting on him to give me the go ahead. We got another nice piece of hickory. Hickory and hickory, dickory dock. And then uh, this was that big old piece that I told you I cut off for that little Ghostbusters guy. Super heavy, some more shelves that I gotta put up. And all of this is nicer wood, right? Like, I fucking love black walnut. Look at that. Look at the green in that guy. That'll be a real pretty piece. It's really thin, but uh, that's gonna make for a really, really pretty piece. I got a couple of nice pieces of black walnut in here too. Like this guy, some sapwood black walnut, All right? Yeah, black walnut's hard, um, but you normally get some really, really nice, really pretty grain in it. Um, it is hard and it can be very hard to carve you really have to take your time with it. Uh, if you don't take your time with it, man, you're gonna burn it up. You'll burn it up, you'll burn up your burrs, but this is all, all pieces of black walnut here. Uh, I got some good looking pieces of cherry in here too. Nice piece of cherry. All right, Spike. Yeah, um, I don't have any carvings around here that I did in black walnut right now. But uh, yeah, black walnut is, it's, um, it's a tough carve, man. It's not, uh, it's not an easy carve. It, um, it holds detail really well. 
but you got to be patient. It's nothing that you can, it's not as hard as maple. It's a little softer than maple, not by much. Um, but you got to be patient with it because it'll, it'll burn fast. Like it'll really, really burn fast and, and you'll be pissed off that you burnt it up because it's a little harder to sand. I got my little, little dragon guy back here. He was hidden behind the screwdrivers. He's still in there. Yeah, dude, maple will burn up really fast. Like no, no doubt maple burns up fast. It's one of the things I don't like about working with maple is how fast it burns. Um, it just, it, it burns super, super fast. And then it's hard, so it takes forever to sand out the burn marks if you're gonna try to sand them out. I got my little granite slab for testing the flatness on all my cutting boards and making sure I get them perfectly flat. And these, uh, these pieces of plywood, they're gonna go on the sides of the uh, desk so that I can kind of enclose this whole area here. I wanna, I wanna try to enclose everything right here so that when I do my carvings, I wanna bring this out a little bit and have the camera come straight down over the desk. I have my downdraft table in there, all set up and good. Um, I got plenty of leg room under there. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I remember you were watching me carve this guy and he's maple and that's not a burn, that's actually a little knot hole, but uh, it does burn and it burns really quick. But this is, this little piece right here, he's mm, half to three quarters of a pound maybe, but hard as a rock. I mean, they make baseball bats out of maple, right? So my little mushroom that I carved with my daughter, little piece of cedar. Um, I have found that I think cherry will actually carve really, really well. I had a piece of cherry and I was doing something on it and it was just smooth and it really does, um, it does take a knife edge really, really well. So I'm gonna carve some cherry soon and see how that goes because cherry is also a hardwood but it's a softer hardwood. Yeah, uh, if you can get cherry, I would, I would give it a go because cherry, I feel like really, really potentially carves really, really easily. Like, I feel like cherry is a, a good wood to carve through. I think I got a little piece of cherry over here. Yep, got a little piece of cherry over here. You know what? My Dremel is already pretty much set up. Let me move some of this and I'll run a couple of lines into this cherry. We'll see how that looks. And you'll see how I actually carves. I like carving birch too. It's another good wood for holding, uh, it's another good wood for holding detail, but not being super rough and tough on your burrs, man. I like it. Yeah, we'll start about right there. I'm gonna move this stuff and tuck it away so I don't get it covered in sawdust. Grab out my uh, my carving burrs here. Do an impromptu quickie carve. I grab an extension cord too. And this is where I, this is the whole reason I bought this level ear mic, right? Because right now I got my camera mounted up there. And here I am running around, moving all over the place. And my freaking sound quality would be terrible if I was just walking around doing everything. But I think this uh, level ear mic is gonna be a, a good, uh, good thing for me, I think. Yeah, it, um, I linked it in the, the description to Amazon. Um, it, it was one of the less expensive ones, a little bit more pricey than some of the others, but you got two transmitters with it. So I felt like that was pretty good. Um, just the fact that you got the two transmitters, even if you don't use them both, you'll, uh, 
you'll end up with, um, if you need it, you have it type of thing. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I don't know what burr I want to use. I don't think I want to jump directly to a cut saw. But eh, what the hell? Why not? We all use cut saw. We all know cut saw. So let's, uh, we'll start with a cut saw. And see what we can see what we can do with just some quick carving on it. Nothing, nothing great, nothing special. And this is a smaller piece, right? This is smaller than my hand. But uh, let's do the old uh, down the center, across the eyes there. All right, and that's going to be way too big. Way too big of a forehead, but whatever, you know, put a little face on them. Drop in a little nose. Give them a little bulbous nose. Yeah, eyes are not super even. We're not even, you know, we're not even going to give him a mouth. Nope. His mouth is down there. Right underneath here is lip. Yeah, sure. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to grab my mask real quick. Yeah, I think the audio is good. I'm curious to see how it's going to sound. I'm not going to be able to see any of your comments right away either because I don't have my other uh, my other thing out here. I'm curious to see how this is going to play out and if it's going to sound really, really loud with the uh, with the Dremel so close to me. But we'll see. Let's see how it goes. I'm carving way deeper than I normally would and way harder than I normally would. I'm definitely not carving. I'm not carving gently because I really wanted to try to see just how hard it would be to carve cherry because I don't think I've ever carved cherry before. And I gotta say, it's not as bad as what I thought it was gonna be. Like, not at all. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. And it sounds as though my uh, brushes are going out on me. But I already have a spare set of brushes, so I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned that my brushes are going out because I have a spare set already.
So yeah, not too bad. Cherry doesn't carve too bad. Uh, I don't mind it. But it cuts all burr, of course, and eats right through it. But yeah, I mean, not too bad for, for what that was, just a quick carving in demo. I mean, it's not bad at all. Uh, I carved in it pretty quick. Yeah, I think I like cherry for carving. Plus, when you sand it all down, you're going to get really nice grain with it too. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not even really going to continue on that. I really didn't care about it at all. Just uh, having a quick little demo session there. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that was as easy as I was hoping it would be um, with the, uh, the cuts all burrs. And I was really... I was pushing, I was pushing heavy hands Jordy hard, so I was, uh, I was really tempting my, my burrs there, not, uh, not giving them too much, too much empathy. I was really pushing it hard. I normally do not carve that hard, but uh, I wanted to try it out and I wanted to dive into it and see, see how that was going to work out. And uh, I feel like it worked out fine. Um, I definitely plan to carve some cherry and do something nice in a piece of cherry. I actually have a very specific piece of cherry that I'm going to do something with. I've been holding on to it and waiting to do something with it. And I know what I want to do with it. Um, so actually, I have a customer lined up for it that she wants a very special piece for her and her husband done. And I want to do that in cherry. And it is going to be, if I ever get the skills and the uh, the balls to try it, but it'll be an Indian chief head. And I've got a nice, nice piece to do it with. I'll grab that piece if I can reach it. I don't know if I've got it where it's within reach or not. It, uh, yeah, I think it's... Oh, yeah, I see it. I see it. Now I'll get more than just the one piece out of it. Like more than just the one carving. Come on, you heavy fucker. Oh. No room to move around right now. I really got to clean this shop up. But, yeah. Got this really nice piece of cherry here. All right, it's pretty big in diameter. It's, uh nine, 10 inches across maybe, but big old log. I'm gonna try to do an Indian head in this, um, debark it and, uh, you know, bark comes off fairly easy. I just took that off with my finger. So cuts all extreme burr or extreme disc will eat that away pretty easy. So we'll, uh, little chisel and hammer. As you can see, I'm just busting off loose pieces with my fingers. Comes off pretty easy. But uh, yeah, that should be a pretty nice Indian Chief once I get the, the guts to attack it and go at it. Yeah, I'm not going to carve too much more back because uh, unfortunately... I'm just getting off of work and coming home and I need to go to bed. I'm actually staying up quite a bit later than what I was planning, but whatever. I'm having fun and I'm hanging out with good people right now. So I, uh, I do need to uh, go to bed though, unfortunately, here very soon. So I have to take my daughter to go pick up her car. Uh, I got to take her to go pick up her car before I go to work. So I'll be a little shorter on sleep than normal tonight. It's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, eventually that, uh, that little log, part of it at least, half of it more than likely is going to be a, a Indian chief head bust. Probably a relief carving because I see that that's generally what I do a little bit better with is the relief carvings, not so much with the 3D carvings, but uh, the relief carvings, yes, I, I do a little bit better with those. So. That's probably what it'll be. 
most definitely what it will be it's a relief at this point. I can start taking my extension cords. Yeah, I'm really liking this lavalier mic because I know that the audio quality is sticking with you guys and I'm not having to feel like I'm yelling across my shop to make contact and have you guys hear what I'm saying or doing. So definitely a worthwhile purchase. Definitely like it quite a bit. Nice little pile of sawdust there, right? Oh, welcome back there, Spike. I wish, oh, I can. Yep, so there I am. There he is, the Viking warrior with the big scruffy beard. Um, yeah, I definitely like the, the little lavalier mic. I've got my Bluetooth uh, headset on here too, but uh, just a little lavalier mic right there, kind of tucked in on me. Um, if you back the <laughs> back the video up with just a little bit, Spike, maybe about a minute and a half, I just uh, sampled some cherry wood, as I think that cherry wood is going to carve pretty easy, and to my surprise, it carves wonderfully. Um, I went quite a bit much more heavy-handed than I normally would. I went like Jordy Johnson heavy-handed, uh, and it actually it it carved in really really nice. Um, it. Uh, I did a you know just a crappy little outline, nothing, uh, nothing amazing, but just a crappy little carving outline, little piece of cherry wood. I did that in I don't know probably two three minutes, four minutes maybe at the most. But it was just a little scrap piece of cherry wood that I had laying around, and uh, Bap said that he can get cherry wood where he's at. So I said, uh, well. Let's see how cherry carves. Let's uh, let's give that a test and see how that goes. So we tested that out, and um, I don't know. I didn't look back on the comments yet to see how well Bap could or could not hear me while the uh, while the Dremel was going. But let's see. Let's take a little look back and see what did, what did he have to say. So the mic sounds great. The Sequoia Redwood was your favorite. Yep, okay, so I didn't see too much uh, too much about how it sounded. Bap, how did it sound with um, with the Dremel? Was uh, the Dremel overpowering or no? I mean, my freaking messed up hat hair from work all day. That's all right, it's all going away anyways. That hair is uh, falling out. I don't even know what kind of battery life I got left on this sucker here. I'm down to one bar, but I was at I was at two bars when I started about an hour ago. So it wasn't fully charged when I started. I guess it's not too bad. I only went down one bar in an hour. And that's part of the reason why I thought uh, two transmitters and one receiver would work out good too. Um, like I said, if one breaks, cool. And if not, then I've got a quick, easy swap. When I know the battery goes dead, I'll have a quick swap to put another receiver on and get back at it. And Bap, you didn't get to you didn't get to see it as I was walking around earlier in the garden. Um, how did it sound with the uh, with the Dremel going? Was the Dremel really overpowering or not too bad? Or um, Bap, you didn't get to see it earlier when I was walking around showing the garden and stuff. I took Spike on a little walk and uh, if you go back in the video much earlier when I first go outside okay cool I'm glad it was good with the Dremel um, I will be scoring a much much appreciated large load of popular wood my wife has a 3,000 square foot garden that's <laughs> filled with weeds right now we got uh, we got pretty busy but uh Got some melons out there and some trees and 
some tomatoes and corn and all that. But yeah, uh, Spike got to see a, a large amount of poplar wood, which is in the cottonwood family that carves pretty good too. Um, my neighbor cut down some big trees and told me I could have all the wood that I wanted. So there will be some benches coming once I drag that over. Cool. Cool. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, the benches, uh, benches will be coming, coming in, uh, once I get those logs dried, I'm going to do some good uh, campfire benches for around the fire pit, similar to the ones I have in my property up north. Um, kind of looking forward to that. And uh, I got something else. I don't know where I put it. I'll look for it. I got some. Uh, I got some official bap swag for my uh, my carving area here. As soon as I can find it. I know you'll recognize it, BAP. I don't know where I put it, but I know I got it. I'm not sure where in the hell I put it. I might put it here. Oh, I did put it here. Uh, I went to Cuts All, BAP. I saw something in your shop that I really, really liked. And I asked Mike where I could buy one. It's not a Celtic knot, but I asked Mike where I could buy one he said, they don't sell them. And I said, well, that sucks. And he goes, but I'll set one aside for you. Yeah, so he told me he'd set one aside for me. Yeah, the, bit, the cuts all flag. Kind of excited. I saw it in your shop. I'm like, man, that's kind of badass. So definitely looking forward to hanging that up. I'm thinking it's going to get hung up right above the carving station up there on the wall, nice and high, right? Because I got lots of space up there. So I might hang it up way high up there because I don't think it'll, uh, I don't think it'll go good in this area. Way too big. Oh yeah, she's going to go up. That's for certain. She's definitely going to go up. But yeah, she's, uh, I mean, she's a big, Big old flag, and she's almost uh, four and a half, five feet wide. So yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be going up for sure. I wanted to get the dust collector set up before I started putting the decorations up because the dust is going to fly in this shop everywhere. And without the dust collector helping to tame the dust, it will uh, it'll get pretty nasty pretty quick. So I definitely wanted to have it kind of cleaned up, but yeah, I thought it was really cool when I went in to go and see uh, Mike over there at Cuts All to pick up the stuff for the Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers Element Challenge, Earth, Fire, Wind, Water. Uh, when I went to go in to pick up all that stuff, that's where he said, uh, that's where he held on to it for me because I asked him when I was going in if, uh, if there was anywhere where I could buy them. I said, I saw one of these in BAP's, uh, BAPS videos. Oh yeah, yeah, I met him, dude. I met him. I got a tour of the shop. Um, I got to see how all the burrs are made. I watched all the heat treating and l literally the whole process. And they, every single burr, every single disc has hands on it throughout the entire freaking process. Yeah, dude, I met, uh, I met him. I met his brother in passing and I met his dad who started the business like 60 years ago. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was really cool. Um, and that like everybody at their plant, everybody at their factory genuinely seemed happy. Like, like, you know, they take care of their people. Um, everybody looked to be pretty happy and people send their carvings that they carved with the cuts all burrs. People send them to them. They display them in their, in their, um, their factory area. They, uh, they have carvings all over the walls in display cases, just carvings from people that have said, hey, thanks for your burrs. Your burrs are awesome. Here's what I carved. I'd like to give it to you. Yep. Yeah, they're, uh, like I said, everybody there seemed to be pretty happy. So it's it's a good sign that they, they take care of their employees. Oh yeah, definitely quality tools at last. Like I'm, I don't do, uh, I don't have any sponsorships or anything. I did, was lucky enough to get affiliated with Cutsall, but 
even if I wasn't affiliated with Cutsall, 100% I would recommend them. I was recommending them before I was affiliated, but 100% I will recommend a tool that I really enjoy, that I think is quality built, or that I think is good for the price. You know, um, I don't do a whole lot of Harbor Freight stuff, and I am yet to, I am yet to try it, but I did go out when I was out doing all my shopping the other day and uh, picked up some minor Harbor Freight stuff, right? I mean, I, I went there and I got a little diamond rotary set. Oh yeah, they, they're freaking great. And then I picked up some, um, why? Why these wheels? I've come up that for getting into very, very tight spaces and all the little fuzzies, these work really well and they leave a smooth finish, right? And you can get into some pretty small spots with them, cleaning up in the, the beard hair grooves and stuff like that. And you can do it without burning and you can do it without tearing up the piece. So um, if you got some tricky spots, man, I mean, these things, they get in there. Some of the Dremel cases, um, tool sets have them in there. And I picked up some of these little rotary diamond cutting discs because I think I can use those for beard hairs. I like the way that the cutting wheels did it, but the diamond one will last longer and it should burn while I go. But yeah, these, uh, right there, that little guy, that nice stiff steel, it'll, uh, it'll do its job, man. It'll clean up all those little, clean up all those little burrs and everything. All the little fuzzies, it'll clean it all up. Which one's good for doing spirals? Which burr is good for doing uh, spirals, Bebe? And look at see what time it is. 9.05. It's a few minutes past my bedtime. I'm only going to hang out a few more minutes. I'm going to go and pretend that I'm going to fall asleep in seconds, and it'll probably be closer to 20 or 30 minutes before I'm able to actually fall asleep. That's a secret tool, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're the secrets now. I don't think BAP was ever uh, too much for keeping secrets about carvings. Yeah, the only thing I don't like about uh, looking at this is it doesn't display the chat all the time. Like the chat fades away when I'm looking at it from this angle. Yeah, my sleeping pattern does not depend on the moon. It's stupid night shift, man. It it jacks me all up. Oh yeah, dude, my shop is, and I'm so blessed that the shop holds the noise so well because it allows me to do these Sunday night live carves when my family is sleeping. Like I can run my Dremel. Nobody hears anything. Um, and I mean, quite literally, when you think about it, I can run my Dremel. And as I walk away from where I was just sitting, the door to get into my house is right here. All right. And then right down, right down the stairs, that is where my daughters sleep. And you come in and go that way, right up through that door. That's where all the bedrooms are. And like, right behind this wall. That's my son's bedroom for the most part. So to be able to have just the glass door and all that quiet, and then right behind this wall and underneath, that's where my daughter sleeps and she doesn't hear anything either. So it is 
a great blessing that, um, it is a great freaking blessing that I can do all that carving and not wake anybody up. Um, I'm hoping as my dust collector is going to go in that corner behind me, like right where it's sitting right back there next to the glue, it's going to stay in that corner and that's close to my daughter. So I'm hoping that that runs quiet enough that it doesn't, uh, doesn't bother her. Um, cause that, it, it is pretty loud. It is a, you know, it's like a jet engine when that thing fires up, but if that runs quiet enough sooner or later here where I'm sitting, there will be a table saw and then the miter saw is pretty quiet, but realistically the miter saw is going to be against that wall as well. So the miter saw is really going to be against the wall behind me there, which is the wall where my daughter is at. Um, so I'm hoping that a lot of the stuff is quiet enough. <laughs> yeah, well, and when I'm carving here, when I'm doing these Sunday night live carvings, I'm starting at midnight. I mean, legitimately, I'm starting at midnight and I'm carving until two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning on some of these carves that I've done. Um, so yeah, really blessed with that, to do that and then take you guys for another little walk before I let you guys go. So my, uh, like I said, I live on a main road. As you go out my door here. All right, go out my door, my truck. All right, so I live on a main road. That's the main highway road that comes in and out. My nearest neighbor is way over there across the street. If I carve with my with my grinder outside, they don't hear it. They don't hear it at all. So, I mean, this guy over here, he's he's a good four or five hundred feet away from my house. This guy's an older guy over here. He's pretty far away. I mean, all the way down my road, right? Like the next nearest neighbor is that little white house over here. A little bit over there is a little white house and I want to buy this lot of land that's right here next to me right all that is something I want to buy and there's the front yard yeah carving at night like that is uh it's pretty fun there's my my big beautiful truck I love my truck. Too many miles on it already though. I bought that truck brand new in 2018. I bought it brand new. It had 125 miles on it when I bought it. It is a really nice bit of land. Um, yeah, I don't carve when it's really cold or when it's really hot outside. Um, I try to stay inside, but uh, yeah, I bought that truck in 2018, brand new, had 125 miles on it, off the dealership lot. They had to go and pick it up from another dealership and trade vehicles for it and whatever. Currently it has almost 100,000 miles on it, so I'm legitimately doing 30,000 plus miles per year on my vehicle. Yeah, it's... Uh, it is, it's a really nice spot. My wife and I looked for five years before we found a house that we really, really liked that was reasonably priced. It has a lot of miles. It has a ton of miles. Uh, 30,000 miles a year is definitely high mileage vehicle. Um, but yeah, we looked for probably five years trying to find a house. Um, Finding one that was reasonably priced, that was, didn't need a lot of work. Um, I can do a lot of work. I can do tile, I can do drywall. I'm okay with some electrical stuff. I can do plumbing. Um, I, I do all my own repairs. I do all my own remodeling. Like I, if when it comes time to repair the kitchen, I repair the kitchen, I remodel the kitchen. I've done many bathrooms, uh, I've probably done four or five bathrooms as a as a homeowner. I've done four or five bathrooms over my lifetime and I did all the ceramic tile and 
everything, sweat, showers, tubs, all that stuff. Um, but I don't want to do it. I, I don't enjoy doing it that much. I enjoy the finished product, but I don't enjoy all the backbreaking labor that goes into it, like legitimately backbreaking labor. I don't enjoy that. So when we were looking for a house, I didn't want to spend what we were going to spend and have to put $100,000 worth of updates into some of this stuff. I was like, hell no, no. So when we got this house, uh, for what the market was, it was a, it was a good price um, because it didn't need anything. The kitchen was already remodeled. Both bathrooms were already remodeled. We literally did a little bit of paint. That was pretty much it. We did some paint. We put in new carpet, just very minor stuff, and uh, we're happy, right? We're, we got we got five acres of land, um, and I want to buy the four acres next to me that I just showed you guys, uh, just because I don't want any more. I don't want any more people building next to me. I like having space. I don't like it when my neighbors can hear me flush the toilet. <laughs> So uh, we want to buy the land next to us. Maybe that'll happen after we get this other house sold. Um, but they want a little bit too much money for the land right now. And the housing market may crash here and land might crash. So we might, uh, we might wait and see or we might just snap it up one or the other. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like that there's a big section of brush and woods over there. I've walked through it a little bit. You, know, you get some ticks and you get some other nasty insects around, but I would much rather look at a whole bunch of brush and woods than the side of somebody's house. So the only benefit is that our house on that side of us, it's the garage, but I still have a window to look out my shop, right? So I've got a window that I would look out and that's looking out at my my backyard and my chickens and and my uh, my work area, but even just squirming through here and looking through the dirty window, right? I, the screen's a little bit too much to see through, but uh, it's just nice having the the woods out there. I mean, you you just seen the car go past. Yeah, my wife wants to plant some trees as well. She, uh, my wife has become quite the little horticulturalist she um she wants to get some trees up for privacy and stuff because the the back of my property out there uh past the garden on the way back side of that property there's a little league field for baseball little league baseball field and uh the kids play there every weekend huh. you can hear them playing it's not too bad it's not super loud or annoying or anything like that but um, there's hundreds of people over there usually. So we'd like to kind of wall it off and have some privacy. Right now there's no privacy to it. No, no woods. That was the only downside when we bought this house is that it didn't have as much wooded area as what we wanted because it has no wooded area on our property. It does nearby, but, um, nothing on our actual property. Yeah, that's the that's the plan is to get a, a row of trees back there to kind of uh, seal it off and fence it off type of thing. But um, they grow so damn slow; it's rough, right? Like they grow so damn slow. Where uh, what we want, what we want to be able to have privacy is, um, we'd have to plant like arborvitaes or something that grows really, really fast. Well, most of the people, they're not going to see anything over here unless they're literally trying to look over here. There's a couple of mountains and hills and stuff like that. So there is, there is some privacy, but not as much as what we would like. We want to install There's a lot of stuff that we want to do. And it's, uh, it's, it's a day-by-day, day day, year-by-year type of thing. Now that we're here and we're going to be settled and unpacked like i've got a lot of stuff to clear and clean and unpack here in the garage and shop but um once that happens it'll be good yeah it looks like my uh 
my phone battery is getting down to about 5% here, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bail out. I appreciate you guys hanging out and coming to chat with me. I was not planning on this being an hour and a half live stream. <laughs> the mic is interfering with something. Uh, it might be because the batteries are going dead on the, the phone, maybe. I don't know. Might have been my beard. Uh, might have been my beard scratching it. I don't know. Either way, yeah, definitely need sleep. But uh, I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out and uh, chatting and all that stuff. Um, yeah, definitely wasn't thinking it was going to be this long. But hey, eh, screw it. It was fun. It's always good hanging out with people, right? <laughs> I haven't ever eaten any of the special gummy bears. I've not tried ed edibles yet. Maybe in the future. Haven't yet, though. Uh, big red-eyed Jedi for sure. But, uh, all right, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I will catch you guys later. And like I said, I appreciate you guys hanging out. I keep repeating myself because I'm tired. <laughs> I will see you guys later. Appreciate it. Have a good one, guys.